and it definitely refutes the Darwinist claim that life evolved from the very primitive towards the complex. Moreover, the honeycomb eye structure of trilobites has survived since 530 million years without a single change. Modern insects such as bees and dragonflies have the same eye structure as did the trilobite. According to the theory of evolution, species must have evolved from pre-existing forms. However, there is no other complex life form known to have existed before the trilobites and other species of the Cambrian period. The Cambrian species came into existence all of a sudden, without any ancestors. A well-known advocate of the theory of evolution, the English zoologist Richard Dawkins makes the following confession on the subject. It is as though the species of the Cambrian were just planted there without any evolutionary history. This situation refutes the theory of evolution for sure, because Darwin wrote in The Origin of Species, if numerous species belonging to the same genera or families have really started into life all at once, the fact would be fatal to the theory of descent with slow modification through natural selection. This fatal stroke that frightened Darwin comes from the Cambrian period, right at the outset of the fossil record. In all fossil layers after the Cambrian, living species always appear abruptly and fully formed. The main taxa, such as fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, and the hundreds of thousands of different species within them all appeared suddenly in distinct structures. There is not even a single transitional form between any groups as evolutionists imagine. This fact is the clear evidence that all basic kinds were created separately by God. Evolutionist paleontologist Mark Zanecki confesses this fact as follows. A major problem in proving the theory has been the fossil record. This record has never revealed traces of Darwin's hypothetical intermediate variants. Instead, species appear and disappear abruptly. And this anomaly has fueled the creationist argument that each species was created by God. Moreover, there is no difference between fossils hundreds of millions of years old and their modern descendants. For instance, a 400 million year old shark and a modern shark have exactly the same structure. Similarly, there is no difference between a 100 million year old ant and a modern ant, a 135 million year old dragonfly and a modern dragonfly, a 100 million year old turtle and a modern turtle, or a 55 million year old bat and a modern bat. That is, all living kinds were created by God and did not undergo any evolution after their creation. On the other hand, there have been a few fossils that were touted as transitional forms by evolutionists, but later turned out to be nothing of the sort. One of the most important of these alleged transitional forms was the fossil of a fish called the coelacan. For years, evolutionists claimed that this creature, which was only known in the fossil record, 
had characteristics similar to those of land-dwelling animals. It had, they argued, primitive legs and a primitive lung. These evolutionist claims about the coelacanth were advanced as a scientific fact and imaginary drawings picturing the animal crawling onto land from water made their way even to textbooks. It came as a great shock to evolutionists when a living example of the supposedly extinct coelacanth was caught in the Indian Ocean in 1938. It was then seen that the fish was no different from the fish of our day. Contrary to the claims of evolutionists, coelacanths had neither legs nor primitive lungs. What was worse, the coelacanth, supposedly a creature readying itself to make the leap from sea to land, was in reality a fish that lived only in the deep waters of the oceans, never approaching to within 180 meters of the surface. Another alleged transitional form has been a fossil bird called Archaeopteryx. For decades, evolutionists argued that this creature was an intermediary between reptiles and birds. However, the seventh Archaeopteryx fossil, discovered in 1992, revealed that the creature had a sternum. That is, the chest bone essential for flight muscles. This proved that the animal was a perfect flying bird. The evolutionist claims about the claw-like nails on the wings of the Archaeopteryx also failed, since similar structures were also discovered in modern birds like the Hoatzin. Because of such reasons, one of the foremost defenders of the theory of evolution, the Harvard paleontologist Stephen Jay Gould, had to admit that Archaeopteryx could not be considered as a transitional form. When we examine the structures of different animal groups, we can see that it is impossible for an evolutionary process to have occurred between them. For instance, it is impossible for fish that have their respiratory systems, excretory systems, muscle structures, and metabolisms completely designed to live in water to have transformed into land-dwelling animals by stepping out of the water. Living groups on land are also all very different from one another. Evolutionists claim that birds evolve from reptiles by random mutations. However, reptiles are cold-blooded, whereas birds are warm-blooded. The bodies of birds are covered with complexly structured feathers, whereas the bodies of reptiles are covered with scales that bear no similarity to feathers. Birds have a lung system that is unlike that of any other land-dwelling animal. The aerodynamic properties of the bird wings cannot be explained by evolution at all. It is impossible for wings to have gradually developed, as evolutionists claim, because a half-developed wing is not an advantage, but a fatal disadvantage. Evolutionists also claim that some reptiles transformed into mammals. However, these two living groups are also very distinct from each other. Reptiles lay eggs, while mammals give birth to their offspring. As opposed to the scales of reptiles, the bodies of mammals are covered with fur. The lactation mechanism is peculiar to mammals, and evolutionists can never explain its origin.